So yesterday made you feel pretty small. Um, <clears throat> today, uh, I want to answer the question, like, so the Earth, space is really big. Got to be able to find, like, some other Earth planet out there. I mean, like, think about how much stuff there is out there. So I want to just tell you how special Earth is. And uh, astrophysicists, the astrophysics community, Earth is known as the Goldilocks planet. Not too hot, not too cold, but like just right. Okay. I want to show you some of the character, some of the major characteristics of why Earth is special. So it's not too big, it's not too small. If it was too small, it wouldn't have enough gravitational force to hold an atmosphere in. That's why the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. It's not massive enough to hold in gas molecules with gravitational force. But if it's too big, then it becomes, the atmosphere becomes too thick, just like in our gas planets, um, that sunlight can't penetrate. So we want it, we want it kind of this, this size right there. Okay, we have a liquid core, which produces a magnetic field, which we'll talk about later about this semester. But this shields us from solar winds that would rip off any type of atmosphere uh, that we would have if there wasn't magnetic field. So that's a that's a bonus. Um, the ingredients and the makeup of our atmosphere is great because um, it protects us from ultraviolet rays. It provides a good temperate climate um, and allows for liquid uh, water, or liquid H2O. So that's a really important thing. Turns out that water is the second most predominant compound in our universe. But most of it is in the solid form of ice. Some of it is in the gas form of like steam. Rarely do you find water. Um, it requires a certain, just a from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. That is not that big of a range for water to exist, but we find it in abundance here on Earth. Um, we need that for chemical reactions to transport nutrients. Um, it has a really high specific heat capacity, so it absorbs lots of heat. It buffers that, so it helps our climate, um, and uh, it expands, so it flo ice floats. We'll talk about why that's important later. Okay. Uh, the, f the fact that our the crust has plate tectonics, this is a huge factor when it comes to uh, the carbon dioxide cycle. Um, if it was um, if our planet didn't have a way to mitigate CO2, you get the greenhouse effect. And that's what we see on Ven Venus. Like it's a good size, but it just keeps all the CO2. And so everything on Earth or on Venus, it's too hot there. It doesn't provide enough. Um, it's too hot for life. But if the CO2 levels come too low, planet cools off like Mars that, is, that has an ice age perpetually. Um, so this plate tectonics stuff uh, allows the carbon dioxide cycle to have go up and down it like um, so <clears throat> when it goes into the plate tectonics you know, underneath that like mitigates or buries CO2 but then volcanoes Spoon, uh, spurt out a bunch of CO2 with that. And so there's highs and lows. So we've had ice ages and warmer times, but it's over time, it like has an average. Um, so a quick little time out on global warming. That's usually a question that comes up. Um, so a lot of times you'll see graphs 
like this, like, hey, look, as CO2 goes up, our temperature on the Earth goes up. And this is from 1880 to 2013. I mean, 10 years out of date, but we're... <laughs> Or going up, or you'll see graphs like this, like, hey, look, it fluctuates um, CO2 levels, and then like here, 1950, and then we're like just going up. So, um, it's like a thousand years prior, but if we look at like the history of Earth looking at the geological layers of co2 the purple line is co2 and the blue line is temperatures we're over here pretty low for the earth's history of co2 and temperatures we've seen much higher and much hotter life definitely looked different like, or sorry, the climate looked a lot different. But this compared to, well, a lot of those places, we're doing really well. We're actually on the cold side of things compared to what the history of Earth has been. So how do you respond to that? I'm, this is my personal opinion. We need to be responsible with where we can be responsible. Like, this doesn't, you know, ah, I'm going to drive whatever I want to and do whatever. Like, that's not, but there's other factors that play a part. Let's do our part, but recognize that there's other factors that are going into CO2 levels other than just industry, if that makes sense. Okay, back to Earth. Um, <clears throat> so the moon, right size, right distance. It stabilizes the tilt of uh, our planet. This we talked about was the thing that was responsible for the seasons. Um, the moon stabilizes that that tilt of the axis. Mars doesn't have that. And so where Earth is only varied by 1.5 uh, degrees over a million years, Mars changes by 50 degrees their tilt over 100,000 years, which is like a crazy in terms of the stability of seasons and like like climate. You just be like, hey, I'm living in California and I've got an iceberg sitting in my like back. It was just, it'd be nuts, okay? So um, in the whole thing of like, you know, is there life? Um, a, a, a popular suggestion or like life outside of earth a popular question or idea or alternative is like well maybe it's not carbon based life um so everything that we know so far on earth is carbon based carbon from chemistry class has four valence electrons allows for a lot of bonding and so you're able to create some really complex molecules if you ever do molecular biology everything's carbon based the the thought is well maybe something life on some other planet isn't carbon based maybe it's like silicon or boron and so scientists have tried to create complex molecules using alternative foundation foundational elements and like to to date nothing has been successful so we're, we're thinking like if life exists, it still needs to be carbon based. Okay. Um, so earth itself is unique. The fact um, that our solar system is special. We've got our giant gas giants act like bodyguards for um, for Earth, they're sucking in asteroids that could potentially hit Earth. Um, so we like those. And we're also in the spot of the habitable zone, <coughs> too close, and all your water turns to steam and boils off. Too far, all your water turns to ice. Um, so Mars 
is sort of within the habitable zone. Um, it actually has <clears throat> an elliptical, more of an elliptical orbit than Earth. We're really, really, really close to a circle. Mars goes in and out of the habitable zone. Um, our sun our, is a great star to be living within. Um, less than half the stars are bachelor stars, meaning they're, they're single. Like a lot of them have uh, binary stars or even three or four stars. Trying to do an orbit or like a, a circular orbit around this would be like, wah, 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 wah. like it just, let's just not talk about climate on those planets. Um, the size of our star. Um, if it was too small, then it would be going too fast to be in orbit. And be, it just wouldn't work. If it's too big, um, it would cause tidal lock. Tidal lock, um, the moon is in tidal lock with the earth. So if my head's the earth and this is the moon, okay, I'm always looking at Wilson. Okay, the moon does not do this. It does not rotate. It's locked. We always see the man in the moon. We always see the certain face. That makes sense. So like the dark side of the moon. And sometimes it's light, but we never see it. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So if the sun was bigger, Earth would be tidal locked. We wouldn't have day and night. It would just be desert antarctica this would be our only habitable zone if the sun was bigger <coughs> too big okay. the age of the star is like like awesome if i could personify a star in their infant stages they're like throwing tantrums like big solar storms throwing bursts of um, radiation out, just like not very conducive for life. At the end of their life, they're like going back to cantankerous, like rah, 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 throwing out tons of radiation. All this life's dead. We're right at the mid, like mid age of a star, and they're like totally chill and docile and like doing well. So, um, <clears throat> how the, the planets are arranged. Um, we're estimating that uh, only 2% of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy have orbiting planets. Um, if the massive giant gas planets are too close to an Earth type orbit or Earth type planet, they'll throw off the orbit just with the gravitational pull, change of distance and climate changes and it's bad. Um, so the solar system is great. Where we're at in the galaxy is great too. So turns out they're the only in the Milky Way galaxy. These are the only habitable zones in the Milky Way galaxy, and we find ourselves right here in the Milky Way galaxy. Everywhere else, you get supernovas. That's bad. That's exploding stars. Like that doesn't produce life very well. And further away, you still get blast with different radiation from different stuff so it's like that's good right there same slide um the age of our galaxy is nice too um if it was any younger um you're not getting formation of planets any older you're getting hit with radiation it's just so it's like we gotta Nice age of our galaxy. And then going further, the type of galaxy we have, um, only there's only 6% of the observable galaxies are spiral galaxies. This would be an example. The Milky Way galaxy is an example of a spiral. Everything else doesn't allow for formation of planets. It's just you get stars, but you don't get the planets. Um, so if we were to like take a picture, like 
do like inverse or like zooming out from Google Earth type thing. So here's our solar system zoomed out. That's our star within our neighborhood of galaxies of stars. Sorry, within our neighborhood of stars in our galaxy. Zooming out, here's where we're located in the Milky Way galaxy. Zooming out, this is our neighborhood of galaxies. Zooming out, all this dust, clouds, are like light from galaxies. So every, this is called powers of 10. Every line that you see down here is another 10 times the distance. That's our solar system. That is not the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> this is the Milky Way galaxy. Pretty cool. All right, so 100 billions of galaxies in each galaxy is 100 billions of stars. Why so big? I mean, it's just huge, right? Like waste of space, like, like goodness gracious, that's so much stuff. So check this out. This is super cool in my opinion. Okay, so the mass density of the universe determines the elements in the periodic table. So mass density is how much mass there is and how much space there is. It's pretty much like looking at how much stuff there is. Um, here's the periodic table as we know it. Okay. Quick crash course on Big Bang. Okay. So um, in science class, you learn there's um, – solid liquid and gas okay you're in you're solid you're colder as you add more temperature the molecules wiggle a little bit more and the the bonds between them break up and they become liquid if you add more heat the molecules move more and they're the bonds between those are are broken there's more energy associated with it and so then you have gas if you add more heat, more energy, then the electrons come apart. And that's the fourth state of matter, which is plasma. Okay, get with that. If we add more energy, um, which I don't know where that is, but what happens is um, electrons can't be bound. And then at some point you add more energy, protons and neutrons can't be bound to form nucleuses you add more energy more heat a proton can't be formed the the quarks have so much energy that they're like can't even be bound okay so 
that's what's happening as we get closer and closer to this point of singularity, the Big Bang. Okay, so the light just, and then here in these first fractions of a second, you just have quarks. It's so hot, so much energy that's just nothing is formed together. But then over, um, uh, like less than a second, you start getting uh, protons and neutrons forming. And then over the next three minutes, you get atom like hydrogen and helium being formed as it comes together. And then as things cool down, then, then uh, atoms are able to form by grabbing electrons. And then over time, um, gravity takes over and starts collecting gases to make stars and then things explode and gravity makes planets and stars and galaxies and all that stuff. Okay, so that was the Big Bang Theory crash course. Okay, so um, elements are made from the death of stars. 90% um, of the stars emit light, 90% of the lifetime by emitting light is taking hydrogen atoms and colliding them together in fusion point a process called fusion atomic uh, reaction the nuclear reaction and that's what creates light so you're smashing uh, hydrogen to make helium so you're going from smaller elements to a bigger element after all the hydrogen runs out then the helium is fused together to form bigger uh, molecule of bigger atoms, specifically carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. These are required for life. Um, and as you combine more and more, you get bigger and bigger elements. At some point, it's supernovas, or some of them, some of the stars, supernova, and just uh, spread out a whole bunch of elements. And then over time, gravity brings them together, forms planets. Okay, <clears throat> that's kind of like where all the elements come from. If the cosmic density of the universe um, was it was greater than it is, then during sorry, if it was slightly less massive, then you wouldn't get enough uh, helium to produce any other future stars, and so you're periodic table would look like this chemistry would be really easy but life as we know it wouldn't exist because well there's no carbon okay but if the universe was slightly more massive then there would be too much um, hydrogen fused with helium and it would quickly burn out and you'd only get the heavier elements like that in our universe, but there's no carbon. The fact that we've got these elements here, which are most like molecules of life, um, the percentage of like the chance of that happening, um, astrophysicists have calculated is one out of one times 10 to the 60th. That's not like one out of 60, that's like one out of, one with 60 zeros behind it. It's crazy. I'll be here after school tomorrow, or no, tonight. I'll be after school tomorrow too, but. <laughs> Test tomorrow.